Hey guys, this is Lady Lee and today I'm going to show you how I start my seeds for my gardens uh, indoors. Let's do it. Before we start um, actually planting the, th the seeds, you might be thinking and asking yourself, do I really need to do that? The truth is you don't need to start seeds indoors if you wait for the right time of the year and uh, plant your seeds outdoors they'll do just fine however if you decide to start your seeds indoors it's probably because of two main reasons first you get a really really big jump start on the season if you start your seeds uh, indoors so if I can uh, here in the south I'm in, um, in zone 7b if I can plant cucumbers in the middle of April or let's say the third week of April outdoors if I start my cucumber seeds in the middle of February indoors then by the time I transplant my cucumber plants to the garden they are already two months old which means about a month later or something like that I will start getting cucumbers so you get a really big jump start on the season you also can protect and uh, control the strength and the growth of, um, of the little seedlings. There's a lot of uh, animals out there, bugs and other animals, birds and stuff like that, that really like those tiny, green, fresh, young uh, seedlings. And many times I had the problem of having something germinates in the garden and um, disappears a couple of days later. So if it's indoors, you have much more um, control over the little seedlings. You can make sure you feed them just right at the beginning of their lives. And we'll see how to do that uh, in just a minute. So they grow good, a good root system um, early on, which is great. So um, those are the main reasons why you'll start seeds indoors. There are probably many more. Um, but uh, those two will be really the main reasons to get a jump start on the season and to be able to protect and control the little seedlings. So to keep this video fairly simple, I am going to show you how I plant uh, three different kind of seeds in one tray today. But um, there is a post on my website that goes into a little bit more of in detail information on how um, you'll plant different seeds for example for cucumbers or all the squashes you'll use something like that uh, with a little bit bigger cells because they are uh, bigger plants and they grow really fast on the other hand if you are doing lettuce you'll use what we're going to use today which is uh, 128 um, uh, tray of sales. Uh, there's other ways to do that. You can use soil blocks if you want. That's another option when it comes to starting seeds indoors. Uh, but we'll just use those trays and I'll have links to uh, below this video to where I get my supplies and um, and also to the blog post on my on my website. Um, if you sign up to my newsletter, you can also get a pack of homestead management printables and one of the garden printables over there uh, has um, a detailed table on how long before the date that you're supposed to transplant plants out to the garden, you need to start your seeds indoors. So. If you can plant cucumbers again, for example, outdoors um, on the third week of April, then you have to start them about eight weeks, six to eight weeks before that date indoors. So um, if you sign up for my newsletter, you can uh, get a printable with the number of weeks that you need to start seeds. Um, indoors before the outdoor planting time. I'm going to do a tray. Uh, we're also going to use this tray which has no holes in it 
and this will um, just protect my shelves. I have wooden shelves that you'll see in a minute. And those trays have uh, drainage holes in the sails. So in order for the water not to drip all over my wooden shelves, I'm just going to use this tray to put the sail tray in. And that will keep the water in, on the, in the bottom shell, uh, bottom tray. Okay, so we're going to do one, one twenty-eight cell, um, one hundred and twenty-eight cell tray of lettuce, basil, and spinach. Um, I simply just don't need 128 heads of lettuce in the garden ready for harvest at the same time. So I'm just going to use this whole tray, but I'm going to divide it into, you know, three and start my spinach, my basil, and my um, lettuce in the same tray. Okay, so let's talk about what kind of soil we are going to fill um, our trays with. Uh, you can find um, seed starting soil in the store and you can use just that. However, I do recommend to, um, to add uh, some more plant, organic plant food to it. I want to encourage you to invest a little bit of money and buy soil that is for starting plants indoors. In previous years, what I try to do is save the few dollars and get just regular potting soil. What, what you get is something like that. And you can see that this soil is full of little twigs and all kind of little wooden pieces. And it makes it really hard, even though you can add enough compost to bring it into um, being good soil for plants. It makes it just hard to get all those little wooden, you know, twigs and stuff into the cells. The garden, the soil that is made especially for seed starting is a very, very fine mix and it's just easier to get it into the cells. So usually I have a bigger bowl, but I forgot to bring it with me. So I just found this box um, in my little storage room and I'm going to use this for now. So I'm going to fill it with garden, with the um, seed starting soil and if you grow organic and you want to make sure your plants are 100% organic, um, you'll have to get the organic seed starting mix um, and it just doesn't have the little plant, you know, the little fertilizer, slow release plant food, little bubble thingies that is in there. Um, you might still get a, a little pieces of wood here and there, so just try to get rid of them. It will make your, um, your work much easier when filling the, um, the trays. Now, what I do with my plants, and I strongly recommend, is that you take a big well, not too big amount of warm castings and add it to your seed starting soil. This is, I think, by far the best fertilizer that you can give, organic fertilizer that you can give your plants. I've done uh, cow manure, horse manure, chicken manure, goat manure. Plants do love it, but when it comes to really, really give them a boost of nutrients and good things there's nothing better than warm casting and i get a big i used to keep worms 
but I don't have them anymore and I just get at the beginning of the season a big bag from uh, Amazon I'll link to it be uh, below and um, it's just it's so precious so for this amount of soil I will sprinkle probably about uh, you know three quarter of a cup or so of warm casting it's very very um, strong and very concentrated but it's not going to hurt your plants if you put more um, so you don't need to worry about that now this um, organic seed starting soil is pretty good it's got the little um, uh, the little uh, white things that help you know aerate the soil if you can you can add a little bit of vermiculite which is this mix you can add it in and this just helps aerate the soil a little better you mix this all together and again usually I have a bigger bowl here so it's easier and I usually do this outside because this is a little bit of a messy business but we have a rainy day here today so in order to do this video I had to come indoors okay Now that I have the mix ready, I am going to fill my um, tray, my sails, with it. Okay, so I placed my sail tray into the solid tray that doesn't have holes in it. And what I'll do is just put the soil in here and just kind of spread it with my hands if you get you know the little twigs you can get rid of them you just kind of push it into each cell I'll finish that and I'll be back Okay, so I finished filling my tray with the garden soil and um, I just kind of smoothed it on the top and what I'm going to do now is just go hole by hole and kind of um, tamp the soil in a little bit. This will also make a good place for the seeds to go in all right so now I have it ready for the seeds <laughs> 